say hello to our three current viewers. Hello, people. I'm one of them. So hey. I, so our one current viewer. Two, two and a half current viewers. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, dear. All right. Uh, so as a quick recap, uh, last time uh, you guys had uh, successfully extricated yourself from the... Uh, from the underground tomb with the undead sorcerer and its minions um, because uh, Zahibi brought the entire temple complex crashing down with the captain's permission, of course. True. All good. Uh, you did manage to uh, to get uh, an ingot of star metal. Uh, definitely, definitely worth a considerable value. Uh, and it is enough that if you had the capability to forge it, you could probably forge a sword or something of equivalent uh, amount of metal. Here I thought we had two ingots. Yeah, I think it's two. Oh, maybe yep. it is two. Oh, there you go. Uh, and uh, Clytius, thinking quickly on his way out, also managed to, to scoop up uh, a handful of coinage and gems and uh, some sort of... Um, bicolored uh, metal hair clasp uh so you didn't leave the temple empty-handed something to uh brag to the crew if just say this venture wasn't in vain right correct Absolutely. i mean they'll probably want paid to yeah uh along the way you yeah. did you did lose some of your uh, some of your marines uh, there's a couple of cairns uh, now kind of scattering the uh, the desert of Bali. Uh, and as you started to make your way back towards Asgalan, um, you ended up going in what turned out to be entirely the wrong direction. Uh, you did stumble across uh, an oasis uh, in the desert uh, that was being used by a group of uh, a group of mercenaries, a group of the uh, the Ashari. Who invited you to share their camp, share their fire, um, gave you a little bit of course correction, told you that you were far closer to the city of Erok than you were to Asgalund. Uh, they did put forth the idea that if you're looking for coin, uh, there are groups in Erok that are hiring mercenaries to uh, to venture into Koth. It seems like there might be some border skirmishes starting up in that area. Uh, they did scoff somewhat at the idea that you guys, you know, you hasty-faced sailors were out here in the desert uh, without mounts. Um, but, you know, good-natured ribbing, nothing nothing too serious. Um, and as you wake up in the morning, uh, Caro is coming out of the mercenary leader's tent. Listen, some say we got lost. I say we found a safe place to camp, and we got closer to a city. And maybe met new friends. It could be good. Well, I think what would be better is we make our way back to our ship. Absolutely. I can agree with the captain here. So yeah, you are probably... Two or three days, kind of west of Asgalan. Now that you've uh, you've had an opportunity to kind of collect your bearings, spent some spent some time with the mercenaries, kind of like looking over their kind of hand drawn maps and comparing it uh, with your own knowledge of the area. You're like, okay, you're about half a day or so from Iraq and three to four days from Asgalan. Look, if we head back and we hit that little river there, we can probably follow the river all the way back to town, and it won't be a big problem. Well, sounds like a plan. I'm just getting well, really tired of getting sand in my shorts. I think the sooner we get back to our ship, the better, for sure. But maybe g -Land here will be uh, kind enough to uh, maybe have some of her people escort us back to uh, Asgard. How many people do you need? Well, I'm, I'm more interested in uh, in mounts, as you told me uh, quite clearly. Us walking around without any mounts is kind of foolish. And seeing that we're sailors and not desert folk, 
maybe a, a, a couple escorts would uh, would suffice. Uh, a couple escorts, a couple of mounts, say a week, you know, counting there and back. Uh, she kind of sizes you up, and you can tell she's she's very very keen at kind of sensing, you know, how much how much monetary value uh, a given mark may have. Uh, that wouldn't be more than uh, what's this? probably about ten gold should cover it. Ten gold for an escort. Two days ride. Now. Well, three days there, three days back. That's better part of a week. You're, well, that's true. You're getting a deal. Ordinarily, we charge two gold per man per day. And you'll supply the uh, the camels to get us there and back? Well, to get us there, at least. Yep. Now, of course, it, it wouldn't be right... For, for me to take your first, first prize, we should uh, maybe think about a, maybe, you know, something a, a, a little more fair, I think, given the, our newfound friendship. And I will attempt to haggle, because I have that talent. Okay. All right. Okay, so D zero persuade reduced by one per two moment. Persuade. We have zero momentum, of course. Not too bad. Two successes. Okay. Uh, she also got two, so you don't actually generate any momentum. Oh, no, the haggler talent gives me uh, a particular thing. It's not uh, resisted? Nope. I just, after making a society test to purchase an item, which we kind of just did, roll simple D0 persuasion, reduce the cost by one, spending two momentum. Perfect. All right. Uh, so, uh, uh, just give her the puppy eyes. Give her the puppy eyes. She's like, well, I suppose we would feel bad if you were to die. Mm. Eight gold. All right. Well, I know when I'm beat. Eight gold will be fine. Now, uh, would you like that now, or would you like that once we reach uh, uh, the city? Oh, now. All right. And anything I purchase is two less for wealthy two, so will that be five gold? Uh, no. If you're not purchasing a thing, you're making an agreement. Damn it. All Good right. try, though. <laughs> we'll take eight gold out of uh, Claudius' dash, I guess. Hey. Well, did I tell you how much your stash was worth, Don? Uh, no. Oh, well, let's find that out. Uh, one, two, one, three. It's a really good item in the hair class, but then odds and sods of gems and jewelry, I mean. Coins, I believe. Yep. Uh, so basically, there's about four gold worth of uh, assorted uh, silver, um, so on and so forth, and then the hair clip itself. Um, somebody want to give me a thievery test? Oof. Do we have a thievery guy? Mm, I don't have the skill. I don't think Ragnar does either. My it's base is a really 10, but I don't have it. it. Wrong no. character for me. I have it. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Just give me a second.
Phytius is less of a thief and more of a professional looter. Yeah, um, well, I just figured we're a pirate, right? So it was built in. I have actually two levels of it, although the awareness data at eight is not horrible. But hey, I get a 10, so half and half chance. Yeah. Hey, you got two days, so. Yeah, what if I might have a talent that might affect that, too. Nope, just straight ball. You can buy Dice of Doom if you so choose. Not a bad idea. Well, sure. Let's see, well, how does two Doom sound? I mean, it sounds fine to me, but... Oh, it does. I'm just asking the others. All good with me. I mean, we need money, so... You do you. Bingo. And hopefully it'll help us out in the momentum box. What could possibly go wrong? You say this as we have a nearly three-day journey back to the city. Oh, there's wow. some there's some great roles for you. Good right. time to have them, boys. Good time to have them. So yeah, you kind of look over this uh, look over this hair clip. Um, and the, you don't recognize the, the two metals that make up the, the kind of bicolored striations through it. Uh, you're pretty sure one of them is gold. The other one looks like it might be, might be platinum, maybe, um, definitely, definitely rare metals. And you figure that, you know, in a, you know, in a, in a decent sized, uh, jewelry market where there's some room for haggling and negotiation. Uh, this hair clip alone could probably bring you about 10 gold. Cool. All right. Well, we don't want to, we don't want to offer the, the hair clip. Then. Cause then know. we have to ask, for, ask I... for change and it makes us look I... like scrubs. I think I could probably get more than 10 out of it with the right rolls. Uh, do we got ten gold between us? Uh, I've got five. Okay, uh, I got. I've got two, so we need eight. Uh, yes, eight is agreed upon price. Although the remainder of the stuff is four, we only really got to cover four more. All right. Well, Clytius will front the four then. Yeah, I don't think I have anything. Okay, I'll, I'll make a note, Clytius, we owe you four gold. Oh, I spent mine to get rid of insanity. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so you guys are kind of like sitting at the table, this little like ramshackle table that they've uh, they've brought out as you're having breakfast. I'm just kind of like piling this, you know, you know, a couple of necklaces and some silver coin and a couple of smaller gems and everything, just kind of putting it on a pile and then you just kind of push it across to her. She just kind of, you know, smiles as she eats her eggs. Clytius pulls a couple of gold out of his boots and one out of his belt buckle. Ah, like, oh, there we go. So, just uh, don't let word get around that uh, that w we agreed to work for you as a charity case. Well, what we'll owe you one if we run across you again. Well, that is something that I will definitely remember. Hey, I thought you'd remember our evening together. Yeah. Ouch. It was enjoyable enough. Enough that I decided to give you a discount. Well, I'll take it. And if you are ever uh, hard up for coin to find yourself in Azkalon or Eric or any of the other cities here in Shem, you know, just put the word out. We'll hear about it. There's always, always work for people willing to uh, 
to sell their sword arm. We'll keep that in mind. And if you have any uh, messages you need to be delivered to Argos, we're heading that way. Nothing currently. We don't have any contracts or anything with uh, with the Argosians. All right. It's going to work on your technique, Kevin. They ain't over yet. Um, so yeah, so as you finish off breakfast, she kind of motions for uh, for uh, three of her uh, three of her band to uh, to start getting the uh, the camels ready. It is uh, it is weirdly uncomfortable to uh, to try to ride a camel if you don't know what you're doing, which we do not. Ragnar is probably the most uh, out of water here. <laughs> uh, does does ever does anybody have animal handling? No, negative. Afraid not. Just hunter. I've heard you just have to punch him in the face. It. The, the, the Ashuri lucky. Oh, I do you know. have animal handling expertise and focus of one. There you go. Oh, there we go. For a total of eight. Yeah. Better so, than nothing. Um, so, yeah, so uh, Ragnar and, uh, and Tebian kind of get the, uh, the hang of things fairly quickly. Um, the, the biggest thing is to try to. Basically, it's not like a horse, the back isn't flat. So, it's a lot of getting yourself situated. But what you, what you kind of get it together since they both actually have animal handling you know there's a saddle there's stirrups it's kind of the same uh the rest of you though um it is it, it takes it takes some assistance and you can tell that the uh the ashuri um the the ones that have been hired to guide you are trying very very hard not to not to laugh like they're 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 trying to be respectful the ones that are not hired to go with you, however, are like, you know, bent over, you know, laughing to kill themselves sort of thing. Uh, they will make great, you know, campfire stories about this funny. And, uh, Jelan will go, it's a little bit different than a ship, uh, but you'll find the rocking motion is quite similar. I I've heard them called the ships of the desert. Yeah. Uh just uh, whatever you do, uh, don't antagonize them. They got a they got a very mean kick. And uh they don't like you, they'll spit on you, and that stuff stinks to high heaven. Lovely. All right. Uh so uh you guys get mounted up. Um uh, the Ashuri that are coming with you, they like grab some of the gear from the from the band. So like uh, you know, they like take down one of the tents and kind of fold it up so that you've got some shelter when you uh, when you need to camp out. Um, they make sure that uh, like they fill out their water skins here at the oasis. Everything is uh, you know, get everything ready uh, before the the groups split into two groups. Uh, the the Ashuri themselves heading towards Eric. You guys heading off towards uh, Asgolan. And if Clytius would like to make a uh, survival roll, uh, the Ashuri will assist. Here we go. All right. I will spend a momentum. All right. So. Yeah, there's a brief moment where, uh, you know, the uh, Ashuri are kind of like, no, no, this way, this way. Clytus is like, nope, this way. And you know, you know, having looked at their maps and everything, paid attention to the stars overnight. Um, you know, despite the difference between the ocean and the desert, you know, the stars are still the stars. You're like, if we go this way, we can uh, we can find the, uh, you know, the, the start of the river and then just follow it down to Asgolan. That is definitely... Yeah definitely the safest route as opposed to uh just going straight overland 
And we have a fresh water source we don't have to worry about. Uh, the, the river, yes, this far, this far inland it is fresh water. Closer to the coast it is not. Yeah, it goes through a transition phase and then hits the open water. Uh, can we spend some momentum to uh, lessen the time? Uh, yes, you can. What's that cost us? Uh, two momentum. I'd say that's worth it, eh, guys? Yep, make it. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, so with the uh, with the Ashuri leading you uh, and the and the mounts, you do make a very quick time, and it. It doesn't take long for Tebian and Ragnar to kind of get the uh, the the hang of how these you know how to guide these camels. Uh, at first, for the first part of the the journey, like everybody is kind of partnered up with one of the uh, Ashuri. Um, although some of them will take turns walking so that you guys can ride mounted, since that's what you paid for, uh, because they're only bringing three camels with them because there's only three of them to bring the camels back, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, you do get the hang of it. Um, it's not, it's not completely dissimilar from riding a horse once you kind of understand the animal's uh, temperament. Um, and you make surprisingly good time. By the time that you're, you know, the sun's starting to get a little bit low and the the like the cooler temperature is starting to set in, you figure you're, you're maybe a day from Asgalon, maybe a little bit less. Well, there, gentlemen. Good job. And you are very, very clearly just following the river now. So there, uh, Quaitius won't have to make any more survival checks. I found water, Captain. Uh, we're back in it. Well, almost. Right. Um, are you guys setting up watches overnight, or are you leaving that to the Ashuri? Oh, I think we'll help. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who is on first watch? Sure. Okay. Give me an observation test. I'll spend one. Uh, I get to reroll the nineteen. There we go. Okay. Uh, so. Um, so as you're watching, got a little bit of a campfire going. You see, like a little bit out, kind of at the the edge of the campfire light. Um, it looks like a shadow just kind of moving over the dunes. All of the other shadows are like that are being drawn by your campfire. You know, there's flickering shadows, but then there's one that distinctly moves, kind of counter to the flickering. Is there any of the uh, Shari on uh, on watch? Yes, the the, the Shari are div dividing up the evening between them. You guys are just kind of keeping watch with them. I was like, hey, you see that? Throw, throw more fuel on the fire. All right. Don't so, need to tell me twice. Yeah. And the, uh, the Shari, they have like these... Uh, they're like pucks of like dried camel dung and hay uh, that they use as fuel. Sure. So they throw a couple more on, kind of get the fire going a little bit brighter. Fine with me. Uh, wood is for making boats. 
and uh, as the as the campfire light intensifies um, and kind of pushes back, you can see that shadowy thing just hovering at the periphery of the light, but not coming into the light. It's like it's a sand demon. A what now? The sand demon. They say that they are uh, spirits of those that the sands have claimed. Travelers who have lost their way and perished. Ah, okay, sure. They come out at night. The light keeps them at bay. All right, so uh, you don't think it'll get brave later on? Don't let the fire go out. No, fair enough. As long as your fire burns bright enough. It'll keep them at bay. When the sun starts to rise, they'll go back to wherever they come from. Well, hopefully we got a good stock of them turd balls. Well, we have some. Yes. Had you and your friends perished out here in the desert, that is likely what would have become of you. Beats Krakens. Does it? Doesn't I mean yeah. I don't... But if the light goes out, they will sneak up behind you, wrap their hands around you, and strangle the light from you. All right. Huh. I'm going to bed. Have a good night. Yeah. Thanks. Well, if he's not concerned, I'm not concerned. Well, I'm a little concerned. And who is taking? Third watch. Yeah, I'll take third watch. Uh, Clytius will, will pass out in the morning to not let the fire go down. Because they're fucking sand demons or some shit, apparently. Ragnar still has two of his men, right? Uh, you still have... I believe I still have Floki and uh, the, the other one, the archer. Uh, you still have um, you still have Burka, who's your archer, Berke, yeah, and one of your marines. Yeah, Floki, the, the the one that we said wouldn't die because Floki can't die. He he can, but we chose the other two first. Yep, the two nameless guys can die. Yeah. All right, uh, Tebian, give me a survival check. Bearing in mind what uh, Clytia said about keeping the fire going. Oh, yes. I'm going to concentrate on that. Yep. Mind if I use some momentum, guys? Go ahead. What I'm using for? two. Difficulty one? Uh, yes, difficulty one. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, partway through your watch, you do notice that the, the fire seems to be... You know, getting a little dim because I mean, <clears throat> you're kind of used to it. You know, at a certain point in the campfire, you know, you like to just kind of bask in the glow of the embers and kind of fall into that false sense of security. And then you're like, "Oh shit!" Like he said, "Don't let the fire go out." Um, kind of, you know, the uh, the uh, the Ashari that's on watch with you will dig out some of the the fuel pucks, uh, and you manage to, to to coax the fire back to a, a good roaring life again. Uh, but you did notice that as the as the firelight were starting to dim and the shadows came in, there is definitely a presence out there. Yeah, not a fan. Uh, but uh, as uh, you pass off your watch to the fourth person. Uh, Ragnar and his men will take that one. Okay. And Captain will too. Uh, so I, yes. the, I take the morning watch so I can make breakfast. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so as everybody gets up, uh, you know, the, the story gets passed around about this uh, the sand demon and how important it is to keep the, the fire going. Uh, so everybody is very sure not to let the, the fire go out. Um, the night passes uneventfully since Tebby made his survival test and did not let the fire go out. Wow, that's, a, that's awesome. Uh, so you get up to the the smell of uh, of breakfast. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, the um, the Ashuri. I mean, they've got some rations and stuff like that, but they also will uh, will help Rory to identify some of the the local cacti and stuff that are that are edible. Uh, so there's like this, um, like sweet, like oddly sweet and bitter, kind of like kind of like you know how lemonade is both sweet, sweet and bitter at the same time. Uh, so there's like this cactus juice that they that they press. They've got like a like a little portable uh press that they use to extract the juice uh and they'll basically show worry some techniques that can be used to to harvest some uh some actual like edible uh flora out here in the desert awesome but other than that the uh the the trip to the the, the rest of the trip to Azgolin passes uneventfully you follow the river as you start to get like closer to the city itself you start to see like um like small fishing boats in the river um a couple of little trade uh boats like very very small trade boats because basically they take the river up and then they have to kind of portage them uh over the the lower mountains into koth so they're not uh, not great trading vessels by any stretch shallow draft boats but Definite signs of civilization until uh, you reach the the outskirts of Asgolan. Uh, at which point the uh, the Ashuri will, you know, help you to help you to dismount, uh, help you to get your stuff uh, off the camels, and then, without even saying a goodbye, they uh, they just turn around and leave. Um, and you notice that when the group split up, when uh, when the main group went on to uh, to Eric. There is no exchange of goodbyes or anything either. It's just a, uh, you know, split it, split the ways and off they go. There's no prolonged goodbyes. They're definitely not Canadian. Interesting folk. I mean, you say that, Captain, but I am glad to see the back of them. Well, I think we were quite fortunate to run into them. Uh, fair enough. You did a great job leading us home. Uh, and before you rises the city of Asgolan once again. So you guys will be making your way into the Eastern Gate. Um, even even at this time of day, the city the city is bustling. Uh, you pass through. Uh, you pass by the hanging gardens, you pass by uh, the large tower. You already know from previous experience that the central market area uh, is uh, almost straight ahead. Like if you follow that main thoroughfare from the east gate, um, it leads right to the market. You know that the, the docks are on the far side of the city. Uh, you're well within your time frame, so uh, Grim and your crew should be waiting there for you. All right. Well, let's make it back to a ship and uh, keep an eye out for any of our uh, any of our crew that might have got themselves into some trouble during some shore leave. Well, I expect Grim kept them in line. Oh, I'm sure we can swing past the stockades. Um, yeah, none of your none of your men are in the stockades. If they caused any trouble, they've already been extricated from it. Uh, but is you... oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say we could stop at the bathhouse. You could if you like. You do have, you know, the better part of a week's worth of uh, desert bank upon you. Probably camel spit. Probably a bit of that too. Well, it wouldn't hurt to get cleaned up. There are some crevices that I don't think we'll ever get the sand out of. Well, let's get cleaned up and get back to the boat. I have, uh, we have things we need to be doing. Yes, I... uh, so yeah, you make your way to the, the bathhouse and it's a, it's a very large, uh, marble building 
with multiple baths, like some of them hot, some of them cold, some of them fresh water, some of them salt water, basically whatever sort of uh, public bath you would like. Um, it's very weird because, I mean, you guys are, I mean, there is some farmland around Asgalen itself, um, but it's still largely desert, but there is a ton of greenery in the bathhouse. Um, probably because of all the all the steam from the hot water and everything but there's like these hanging planters everywhere of uh plants and uh and flowers and ornaments and stuff that are not not necessarily native to shem um and rory you would realize that some of these are probably here because the steam helps them to release like essential oils into the air to help with that overall um kind of healthiness of the bathhouse gotcha. uh it's uh, it's a very lovely way to to spend the morning after trekking through the desert you know back and forth uh for like a week uh but by the time you're all uh done um you know you're all you're all bathed your clothes are cleaned um shaves for those of you that want them haircuts all of the all of the amenities it's like a like a spa day oh beautiful uh and then you make your way down to your ship which is exactly where you left it with all the same people uh with all the same people You do notice that there's like a there's like a little uh, kind of a wooden post where Grim kind of keeps track of how many days you've been gone. And as he sees you arrive, he kind of like scratches out that one. <laughs> no luck this time, buddy. I had no doubt that you would return. Well, were you were hoping we'd be a little late, though, I suppose. Well, honestly, if I wanted my own boat that badly, when we set into port, I would bid my adieu and find my way. I'm not here to judge you, Grim. I understand who you are, where you came from. We're just uh, happy to have you aboard. Uh, hey, Grim, so how did I do in the poll for, like, for the betting? Oh, that's right. And he starts going around to the, the men, getting everybody to kind of uh, pay up. You know, the, the people who thought that you would never return, the people who did. Um, who all who all bet on whether or not you guys would have returned? Oh, I clearly did. Uh, so you'll, uh, you'll net two gold. All right. Thank you very much, lads. And by gold, it's like a, you know, a, like a, a good sized handful of various assorted coinages. Excellent. I think it's important to note for people who play D and D uh, that gold in Conan is not specifically gold coins; it's treasure. Yeah, it's just stuff. Yep. Twig. Yeah. Okay. So, are we setting sail, Captain? We are. We're heading into Argos. He kind of looks around at the ship, which is clearly of Argosian design. It's all right. I was a merchant captain in Argos for many years. Very well. Now, did, did we now, want to see if we could take on some of that cargo again? That's what I was just about to say, Claudius. Ah, didn't want you to forget that, though. I, I was thinking we could pull uh, whatever resources we have available to get ourselves some legitimate cargo. So, well, when we're sailing through Argosian waters, we'd have a, a particularly good reason to be there. That said, I don't believe we have a great deal of resources at our disposal. Well, at this point, we could probably parlay that uh, shiny, uh, shiny comb into into some some decent cargo. Why? Well, well, it's probably quite possible that may be worth a way bit more in a city like in Argos. Well, Asgalon is also a major trading city. 
Oh, okay. It is. And they seem to like fancy stuff, so. Yeah, Asgalan is the major port for the for the country of Shem. So it is it is a major port, just as, just as much as uh, Misanti is. Well, maybe I'll uh, take some minute and uh, see if I could find someone that might be interested. All right, dudes, give us some money, and then we can buy some cargo. Right, maybe uh, buy low, sell high. I right, it is something that they can't probably get where we're going but we can get fairly cheaply here. And then that way, at least if nothing else, we won't become the target of pirates. <laughs> well, pirates are the worst. For sure. All right. So I'm going to try to use Gorelius to find a contact that would like to buy this bridge. It's a little easier. I'll go with you, Captain, just so... Uh... Nobody gets any ideas. You start flashing that thing around. Oh, I think that's a very good idea. Yep. So that reduces the difficulty to find a contact by one step. Okay. All right. Perfect. Uh, so that is a uh, society test. Uh, assuming you're trying to find legitimate cargo. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so it is a society test. Uh, with your talent, it will be difficulty two. Difficulty two? Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I guess it's expensive. Uh, it's not so much that it's expensive. It's the fact that you're just not completely sure what the customs and everything in Shem are. It's a it's a cultural right. difference thing. And that language maybe four. Yeah, and language barrier. Go to two. I'm going to spend a couple momentum on this. Actually, I'm going to spend a bunch because I got a good target number on it. All right. Um. So, you uh, you kind of ask around. Uh, give me a sec. Let me find my name table. Uh, so yes, you are directed to uh, a merchant named Sargon. S A R G O N. Sargon. All right. Does he speak Argosian? Uh, he does. Uh, and specifically, he is a. Uh, uh, primarily, he is a uh, he's a jewelry merchant, uh, so he's definitely interested in the uh, in the bracelet or the the hair clasp. Uh, but he, uh, uh, because he is a member of the, of the guilds, he can basically act as a middleman for you to find other cargo. Well, perfect. We'll see about, um, trying to trade this brooch for, uh, something innocuous. All right. And remember our guild membership's all up to date too. Yes, it is. You got strong armed into that before you left. Yes, my, my society guy got owned last session. Oh, yeah. Or session before. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, so it takes basically the better part of the, the day between getting to uh, to Ascalon, taking some time in the baths, um, getting the crew to start getting the ship ready, and then hunting down uh, cargo. Uh, but uh, by the time it's all said and done, you can trade the bracelet into like 15 gold worth of various assorted like uh things like uh silks and perfumes uh spices things that are not necessarily easy to come by in argos all right so can i leverage Hagler and wealthy here that's taking that into account so okay. the, the bracelets were 10 you're getting 15 gold worth of other stuff for it and that's already taken into account sargon's count as a middleman Solid. Yeah, legit. So. And then, of course, like the, the necessary uh, trade tariffs and taxes and loading fees and all of that stuff. Oh, yes, of course. 
Ah, uh, bureaucracy. Yes. Uh, Asgalen does have a very, very functional bureaucracy. It's probably as old as humans. Yeah. And uh, a lot of what uh, Sargon does as he's introducing you to different people around is, you know, slip a couple of coins to this person. Uh, make a very, very failed threat against that person. Yeah, Carl's really, really good at this, so he'll play along. Yeah. Boy's clearly got some skills. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Sargon, uh, aside from being just a merchant, is also uh, kind of like what you would call a fixer. So if you ever find yourself in Asgallon again, you you can basically write him down as a like a contact or a patron. Cool. Oh, wow. Feeling like Shadowrun. Yeah. I mean, ordinary, ordinarily, in order to get a patron, you actually do have to spend a bunch of gold looking around, but... As long as he doesn't want us to find him a fish tank. That fish tank job was the best. <laughs> I don't want to know. Uh, it was a Shadowrun game where... Uh, in one Shadowrun campaign, I presented a job to the, the players where they had to steal. It was a, a fish tank that was des uh, genetically designed to be uh, to look like uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night. Oh, cool. I want one. Uh, and they passed on it. So in the second Shadowrun campaign, I got them into a position where they had to take it. So they had to try to steal a fish tank full of fish without killing or upsetting the tank. Nice. Needless to say, it's a lot more trouble than it's worth. I think Don hates that as much as he hates monkeys. I, I do believe there's like, isn't there multiple iterations of it too? So it can be different almost every time? Yep. It's always good to start a campaign off with that. So, uh, so yeah, Don, Don is still salty about that. That's kind of funny. Trying to keep a uh, fish tank intact while, you know, corporate security are shooting at you and everything else. Yeah. I dig it. Say. It's because you weren't there. <laughs> oh, yeah, Indeed. absolutely. It's all funny when it happens to somebody else. Yeah. You mention oh, it now. Wow. You mention it now and the players get like that thousand eye stare. Thousand yard stare. Just you weren't there. Stir. All right. Uh, so, yeah, so you guys spend the, the day. Uh, or the evening, getting everything organized, um, ready to set sail for Argos the very next morning. All right, Claudius, take us out. And somebody can roll me a d20. So, just let uh, me know when you want my roll, Chris. Uh, yep. So yeah, so it is a it is a nice, bright, sunny, uh, sunny morning. The water is uh, the water is uh, beautiful, clear. You can see fish swimming around. the The surf is very, very, uh, very mild. It's a gorgeous day for sailing. So you can make a difficulty one sailing test. I missed this. Okay. Uh, I'll spend a uh, momentum. Uh, and I've got one reroll. So I'll reroll the 12 just to, to see if we can get it underneath. There we go. All right. So, yes, uh, after like a week. Uh, we can a bit of being away from the, the, the ocean spray and the, the water um, that kind of like lurching underneath your underneath your feet as the, the ship kind of crusts the, the the small waves and everything. It feels it feels nice. It feels like home. Uh, and as you put uh, the port of Asgallon to your back, where would you like to set off to? Uh, I 
heading towards uh, Mesanthia. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Are you just hugging the coast, or are you like going out so you avoid Argosian waters and kind of approaching from the south? No, it's up to the captain. I think we'll be cautious going around, and you never know, boys. We might be able to find ourselves somebody to uh, yeah, have a conversation with. I would love to see the reaction if someone does try to pirate us. This could be interesting. Well, that said, let's make sure we have an Argosian flag flying, just in case. Aye, right, well, it's not like we're going to fly the Kraken flag. Cover up that, uh, that ballista and see if we can make ourselves look like bait. Aye, right, I'm sure there's a tarp around here somewhere. Um, you would also notice that uh, now that you're back on the on the water, uh, Zahibi seems uh, fairly relaxed too. She did not seem to like being out in the desert all for much either. Well, that just means she's got some sense. Uh, she can probably access her Kraken out here. All right. Uh, what isn't... Uh... Say Trevor, roll me a d20. Twelve. So the, the first day of travel, it's calm. You do see there are there are some trade ships. Uh there is a, a fair amount of trade back and forth between Shem and uh and Argos along this coastline. So the, the it is uh it is a well traveled shipping lane. Um, there are, did you choose to, uh, a number of merchant vessels. Uh, you also notice, uh, since Tebby and I assume is back in the lookout, you don't, there are, there are no signs of piracy along the shipping lane. It's probably a damn good reason for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure we've probably seen one more navy vessel than we'd like to see. There are, there are a few, uh, absolutely a few. Nothing to see here, just merchants. Clatius, Cl mm. I'm thinking that if we uh, we veer port a little bit, maybe get ourselves a little bit off the coast, we might uh, see if our little trap will work. It's not going to be much here. I get. Well, whenever we pass by one of the Navy vessels, I think just to keep appearances up, uh, Ragnar might keep some of uh, the more scrappy looking uh, of our crew uh, below deck. Okay. <laughs> just, just in case. You never know pretty, who's watching. I look pretty sophisticated. I mean, sophisticated. Yeah. And by that you mean pushover? <laughs> like I've read a book. Well, I mean you pretty young that spear though, I'm just saying. All right. Uh for the next day, are you continuing along the coast or are you heading out into deeper waters? Oh uh to steering out uh, towards deeper waters, uh, as the captain ordered. All right. Uh we'll say Tony roll a D twenty. Clearly, it must be a shortcut, right? Seventeen. All right. So as you start to head out into deeper waters, um, you can see the the winds are the winds are starting to pick up a little bit. So there's dark clouds on the uh, on the horizon. There is definitely a storm bringing it, like a bad storm or just a storm. Uh, give me a survival roll. Yes, Clydeus would love to do that. Okie dokie. Cool. 
So we'll spend the momentum. Hmm. I think I get to reroll one, maybe. Uh, no, I don't get a reroll, but uh, my DC is one less. Okay. Um, it's a storm. There's rain, there's wind. You don't know how bad it's going to get. Right now, it looks navigable. Bit of weather coming in, Captain. Anything to be concerned about? Hmm. No more than normal, I would say. All right, well, we'll stay out here for now. Worst comes to worst, we can always turn in shore, right? All right. Uh, so give me a sailing test there, Clytius. Does anybody have a decent sailing that can assist? I got nine. Spend one momentum. I've got eight. Yeah. Your your crew will help. Okay. That's a great ball. Yeah. Oh, the crew will not help. Oh, they got one ten. All right. Uh, uh, so yeah, so you can have turn the turn the bow of the ship into into the deeper waters, kind of leaving the the main trade lane behind you. And as you travel, the you know there are definitely less and less ships. Um, and that storm is approaching, and as it starts to approach, you realize that it is probably approaching a little bit faster than you anticipated. Still doesn't look like it's, uh, it doesn't look dangerous, but it's fast moving. I mean, we're veterans on the water, so yeah. if, if we, if we think it's dangerous, we'll leave, but, or head back in. But other, other than that, I, I think our goal is just to pretend we're prey at this stage. Uh, storm's coming in fast, Captain. Might want to batten down the hatches for a bit. All right, let's make it happen, guys. We, we've probably done this dozens of times, so we'll prep as we should. I'll go down and secure the golly. Okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah, so everybody, everybody kind of battens down the hatches, um, secures everything. Uh, and I'm going to need a difficulty three sailing test as the storm hits you full force. Oof. Oh, balls. <laughs> Burn on. Here, here, I already spent my good roll. Might be a time for a fortune. Yeah, we'll give that a try. Might as well throw one momentum on top of it, too. Get your five dice. There we go. All right, so that will give you two momentum. Uh, so yeah, so the the ship rocks violently uh, as the storm starts to hit. Uh, because Clytius uh, made his roll, uh, everybody can give me a difficulty one agility test instead of a difficulty four agility test. Oh shit! Can I use acrobatics or anything like that? Um, I would allow acrobatics instead. Difficulty one, you said, correct? Difficulty one. It's acrobatics or athletics? Yeah. Carol's love of this. All right. Ooh, nice. <laughs> My two becomes four. 
Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so uh Tebian and Ragnar get thrown around a fair bit. Uh so for Tebian. Oof, that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six damage. Oof. Oh, are my wounds healed? Because I have like three of them right now. They are not. Not until you have a chance to actually rest and visit a healer. They've been treated. They've been treated. Uh, but yeah, as uh, as Tebian kind of gets like rocked back and forth and a wave almost like takes him over the shore and he crashes into the gunnels of the ship, um, those treated wounds reopen. All three of them? All three of them. I only got my work cut out for me. That hurt. Must have fell out of the crow's nest. Might you have. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's the only way they can explain that kind of damage. It's okay. Land softly on your face. <laughs> My stitches reopened. Yeah, pretty much. Your your stitches popped open, and there's like uh, just like a wash of like blood as Tevian like basically crumples up against the gunnels. Uh, Ragnar gets rocked a little bit, but only takes two vigor. Uh, so, but yeah, the the storm is raging around you now. All right, let's get I... um, get Tabby and down uh, out of the galley so uh, Roy can patch him up. Um, and yeah, and it's it's the storm is enough that like when you open the door to bring Tabby down into the into the galley area, there's like that kind of like wash of water down down the steps and so on and so forth. Like it is it is pouring down rain and the ship is rocking violently minor storm is it uh it is fairly minor but a storm on the water is really bad I, I my advice was no no more worry than normal the normal we'll amount of worry is, is pretty high we're, we're fine claudius we're fine we got you with the helm royal patch up to you it's it's all right and uh since Tebian is being taken down to have his wounds tended to, who's keeping an eye open? Um, I guess the captain will. Okay. Uh, I can't go up there. No, I have to be on the deck. Um, send the fucking archer up there. Yeah. Berkey, up to the crow's nest. I mean, if he can shoot a bow, he's got eyes, right? Here's hoping. Yeah, well, his range combat and agility is much higher than his awareness and senses. All right. All right, so yeah, he climbs up there. He's, he's like, yeah, keeping his eye open. Doesn't report anything in, though. All right. Uh, Rory, you can give me a healing check. The difficulty is two. Okay. Basically, yeah, like as you're trying to like suture these wounds up, the ship's still rocking back and forth. Gotcha. Uh, at least one new talent to go here. Let's have a look here. Well, since we're heading into a port, I'm going to take a load from the healer's bag. So that'll add 2d20 to my healing test because I have a little to ease the pain. Okay, perfect. So just uh, treat those as momentum and then I'll add the momentum back to the pool. Fair enough. All right, so that gives me four dice overall. That's not bad. And uh, yeah, I get a reroll. So I think we'll just stick with that. Okay. I mean, on the plus side, the uh, the salt water probably helped clean some of the desert dirt out of the wounds. Oh, absolutely. Salt water is the best for everything. Yeah, yeah. Except for you're drinking it. Or you're getting it into your wounds. So I'm going to re-roll the 20. 
Okay. All right. Uh, so that will get you two momentum. Uh, so you can treat one wound and then one more for every momentum that you want to spend. He currently has four wounds on him. <laughs> I thought I only had three. Uh, well, you took one from uh, the, the six damage. Okay. You get a fresh one and three opened ones. Yeah. One away from death. All right. Well, I, I haven't got too attached to Tebian yet, so... <laughs> All right, so let's see. So I used two momentum, but we should still have six. Or did you put those two back? Uh, I put those two back, and then you generated two more from the roll. All right, so we'll use uh, we'll use four in the treatment, so that way we can heal up. Well, well you... no, three. Yeah, so three. Yep. So we'll get all all four wounds stitched up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get them. It, it's going to take you a while uh, as. Uh... Lightius is kind of battling the, the storm to kind of get everything situated and sutured and everything. Uh, but yeah, when you get to Mesantia, Tebbin is definitely going to need to see a, a healer. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I believe Caro and Clytius are specifically on deck, so both of you give me observation tests. All right. This is the storm. You get to witness the rising of Cthulhu. Difficulties? Uh, with the storm, it'd be difficulty two. I'll spend a moment of online just in case. Reroll the 19. Oh, hell, that was a good draw. All right, so both of you see it, and Carl actually generates three momentum. Uh, there is a ship following you. Ship off the ship off the stern. Um, it's close. You don't know why your lookout didn't spot it. Um, but as the lightning flashes in the storm, you can see through the holes in the sail and the holes in the hull and the holes in the sailors. Oh fuck! And both of you can give me uh, difficulty two discipline tests. Uh-huh. Fun. Phantom ship, fuck. But I'm in the galley with Tebby and we're oblivious. Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to spend one moment on this. I dropped a fortune on that. Reroll the 15. Nice. All right. Uh, so both of you kind of stand your ground, uh, but there there is no doubt in your mind that this is a phantom ship or a ghost ship. Um, and it seems to be seems to be on your tail. Faster. And at what point are we at the in the storm? Uh, you're definitely in the storm. Right. Uh, heavy is laid up, isn't he? Yeah, get the get the sails up. I think. Uh, what do you think, Evan? Uh, Claudius, I think we should get the hell closer to the shore, and if we can manage it, let's get that ballista moved back aft. Do we have is anybody it that's is it good? fixed? Well, there's time. Like the the combat and ships are take hours, right? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's like 15 minute turns or something like that. So the ballista itself is it is fixed, but it is on a on a swivel. <laughs> nice. Just like a good cannon. I was just thinking if we don't get the sails up, uh, we're not gonna not gonna have much speed to get a get away from. Them. Well, let's see if we can outrun them first. Ragdoll. Yes, Captain. Get your men ready, if you could. And send one of them down. I, I need to speak with Rari. Bring him up here, please. All right. Floki, go go fetch Rory. Uh, last time I checked, he was like elbow deep in Tebian. 
Bigger problems. Fraser. We have much bigger problems right now. Hi, sir. And uh, Sahibi is probably downstairs. She doesn't care to stay up on the deck with the storm going on. I, th Captain, I think we should get her up here too. All right, Petra. All right. Uh, so the men get to work uh, unfurling the sails. Uh, I will get. Uh, Clytius can give me a sailing test. Difficulty is two, and the complication roll is 18 to 20 because you've got full sail in a storm. Okay. Spend him a few yeah. Oh, well, there you go. I don't have any rerolls on sailing, so. Oh, no, wait, I have one. Whew. Hey, there we go. Ooh. Nicely done. From a, from a 20 into a 1. All right. Uh, so Reroll and a half, baby. Whew. All right. So that'll generate uh, a ton of momentum. So you do have extra momentum if there's anything else you wish to do. Can you stretch the lead with that? Um, definitely can. That would be like increasing quality of success. <coughs> that sounds like a good idea. So, yeah, sounds good to me. All right. Uh, so yeah, so uh, kind of against all of your sailor instincts, you like go full sail and kind of turn into the storm. Um, you know, hoping to hoping to you know throw them off your trail, and they do follow you for uh, for a bit. Um, but you do put considerable distance. It seems like the the ghost ship. Um, it's not terribly fast. Um, mm. So, I, bet, I bet it's relentless, though. But it it is relentless. Uh, but as you as you kind of head closer into into the main trade lands again, and the the you know closer to the Argosian shore, uh, Rory and uh, Zahibi come up on time, um, and I would say Tabian too. It'd probably like he stitched together. So if he wants to make it up, uh, and you just see this very silently, just glide beneath the waves and disappear out of sight. Suck at you zombie bastards. Boy, well, let's hope it doesn't fucking resurface. Well, I've had better evenings at sea, but um, uh, Rory, um, I know you can't do this on short notice probably, but uh, you know those things that you, you throw that lights everything on fire? I would like you to figure out a way to get one of those on one of my, my ballistas. Oh, well, I, that shouldn't be too bad, I would think. Well, you you, just you have do to the math it. on that. You and, you and Tabby, you're, you're both good at this. All right, well, I think I can um, just we'll make, try to make one really, a uh, really big one, and we'll see what happens with that. We'll use it for the ballista. All right, just make sure we store it carefully, of course. I just uh, put it with the rest of them. Um, but we'll, I'm probably going to need some ingredients when we, when we hit town in order to really make that happen. Well, hopefully we're going to all be very wealthy once we reach town, assuming we can get there without this thing following us. Zahibi? Uh, yes, Captain. That necklace around your neck, as far as I could tell, has something to do with that kraken that you you control this this one in my hand seemed to be the one for your your apprentice fellow right if that's what you believe captain well i don't know what to believe because i don't understand a bit of what you do but if you have a crack in anywhere nearby that ship needs to stay away from us we're all gonna die you understand that i understand <laughs> You do Kirk, understand that calling upon such a beast, if anything were to happen to me, it would be uncontrolled, much as what happened at the temple. I understand how that works, I oh, think, more or less. 
So here's what we're going to do. You and Ragnar are going to go into my cabin. You're going to make sure that uh, your beast is under control. And if that thing shows up again, I want your beast to destroy it. Ragnar's going to make sure you're not doing anything fishy. All right. Well, Captain, I think if we're just stay close to inland on the shipping lanes, I think we'll probably be okay. Well, we're going to be ready regardless. Very well, Captain. Which of your men would you like to be the blood sacrifices? Say again. <laughs> if I'm to summon and control the creature, it requires blood sacrifices. Oh, you would need to, to, to execute or sacrifice people to make sure that Kraken works? It is a it is a beast. It is hungry. So what do you propose I feed it? Oh, well. That, that's good information. Thank you so much, Zibi. Uh, right Captain, on, I do not volunteer as tribute. We're not having any tribute on the on board this ship, but uh, I would like a couple of your men to keep an eye on her. Well, I have a couple left, so can do. Just so, uh, just so you, just so you understand, Captain, I can summon the creature. And I can control the creature. Those are two separate things. If I summon the creature and it has a ready target, it will feast. If I summon it and it doesn't have a ready target, it will need to be fed. Will it eat the dead? It is not fussy. All right. So best keep it in the pocket then and uh, until we actually need it. If we got something for it to eat, then it'll be great. Otherwise, let's not kill off people if we don't have to. Well, I concur, 100%. I think we need to rely on Claudius to get us out of this at this point. All right, he's good at it. Well, just in case you have some time after you patch up Tebian, um, a very explosive or very uh, a, a fiery ballista bolt would be lovely. So just off to one side, kind of with a small whisper, Cotton, can I have the necklace? I can see if I can figure out what it does properly. Well, I suppose so. Do you know anything about this nonsense? Well, let's just say a lot in my upbringing. There's more than one dark story. All right, but if you're going to be playing, then we do it in my cabin where no one can see you, all right? All right, fair. Would you like to join me? Not particularly, but... Uh... Uh, so really just kind of trying to figure out where what it conduits, what it challenge, channels, what it could do potentially, because it might do more than just summon. Right, I don't like any bit of anything what you just said. But what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to let you have this necklace. I can. And, and if you start going, start craving mad, I'm going to throw you overboard. Do you understand that? I am quite aware of that, Captain. The other thing is it might be worth a lot of money. Now, why wouldn't you start with that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the haggler you are. Come on, I do not have the social niceties. I think you figured that out by now. Fine, take it. My cabin, stay out of the side of the crew. But uh, if it's worth something, we'll sell it. All right, I'll try to determine that. It's going to cost us half a half a fortune just to patch Tabby back up. All right, is. I take that out of mine, I assume. Fuck yeah. Alrighty, so you guys make your way back towards the trade lanes. Um, let's say, Jeff, roll a d20 for me. See how the weather is treating you. <clears throat> like a baby does a diaper. Yeah. So yes, you seem to, have, uh, seem to have put the storm behind you. Uh, and, uh, Quintus can give me the sailing roll. Uh, 
We're back to regular sailing rules? Yep. Yep. The, right, cool. the storm has abated. One moment. Uh, Reroll of 13. Into a complication. Ah, good. All right. Um, so, yeah, so uh, as you guys are making making your way through the uh, back into the trade lanes, um, you happen to notice slightly too late to, to get it dealt with that uh, running full sail during the storm weakened um, part of your part of your rigging. Mm -hmm. uh and as you're basically as you're like turning the turning the wheel and kind of taking your bearing and and moving along the coast you hear like this this the sound of stretching rope and then a yep. and then a snapping sound that is a terrifying oh, that's, sound by the that's way that's a bad noise uh followed by several other snapping sounds uh and i'm going to need uh See who would be on the deck at this time. Captain for sure. Yeah. yeah. Not me. I'm in the captain's cabin trying to figure out the necklace. Yeah. Uh so we'll say I mentioned Ragnar's probably on deck with some of his men. Uh so uh Ragnar and uh Phytias and Caro can give me agility tests. Basic agility? Uh, we'll, we'll call it uh, athletics, actually. Athletics. I think it comes down to wherever Zahibi is is where I am, because I was ordered to watch over her. Okay, in that case, she, she is staying below decks. Acrobatics instead of athletics? Sure. Acro yeah, Tebby doesn't have to worry about it. You're uh, far away from the sun. Uh, my two becomes my two becomes four. All right. All right. Uh, so as uh, as various ropes start pinging and stuff starts like just like whipping around fairly violently, uh, Clytius, you managed to kind of like duck under uh, one of the ropes. Uh, Caro, you did get enough successes because it was difficulty two. Um, so you manage to uh, mostly get out of the way of one of the ropes, um, but it kind of catches you across the throat, uh, and it is going to make all of your personality-based tests one harder until you get it healed. Oh, for, okay. Ouch. Yeah. Basically, basically, your voice is wrecked. It's like you, you know, you smoked like twenty packs of cigars while yelling at somebody in a bar all night. Don't judge. Give me that. pictures of Spider Man. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's painful. So I'm going to be busy. Uh, it's the sort of thing that's probably you could try to heal it with like some uh, like healing salves or, or something that you can concoct, or a visit to the healer. Is it traded or healed that needs to be done? Um, technically, it needs to be healed, but it's not an actual wound. So Rory could try, like, you know, here, have this, like, hot tea with lemon, soothe the voice, don't talk for a day, that sort of thing. Mm. Oof. Don't talk for a day. Oh, that'll be fucking challenging. <laughs> wow. All right, I guess Claudius is in charge of getting us back. Uh, and Rory can give me a healing roll. All right. I think... I think I've got one left in the medicine bag. Uh, a fully stocked medicine bag has three, so... Yeah, so I have one left. Clytus, while well, the captain recovers, uh, I'll just enforce anything you say. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, <laughs> shouldn't be shouldn't be a, a big deal. We're, we're just sailing into port. 
Well, everyone knows you're you're second, so hey. Uh, again, Chris, I'm going to call it momentum, and you can yep. check in. Yeah, Clay T is very much is not the type to, to give orders. He's, he's just kind of, you, you guys know what to do. Do it. Well done. Uh, so it'll generate you two momentum. Uh, but yeah, you, you make like this herbal concoction uh, with like some honey and some rum. Like, uh, very similar to like a hot toddy. Oh yeah. Uh probably some of the spices that you got from Shem, so a little bit of like cinnamon or ginger, like something with like some heat to it. You're like, here, yeah. drink this, don't talk for a day. Yeah. Hot and hot. Yeah. I mean, you're not absolutely certain that the not talking for a day is necessary, but it's an opportunity. Yes. <laughs> It's going to be just fun to watch. Uh, and um, so you're looking over the over the amulet. Absolutely. Okay. Are you getting anybody to assist you with it or are you doing it by yourself? No, I'm just going to do it by myself just to kind of get an inkling. I do actually have sorcery as a skill. OK. Uh, give me a sorcery roll. Oh, a complication on this will be bad. Yep. Oh, uh, let's see. What do we, we got? We got a full six momentum, don't we? Yes, you do. All right, I'm gonna throw two in. Uh, what difficulty is it? Uh, it is difficulty. You're trying to study it. Yeah, just to find out what it does. Uh, let's say it's difficulty three. In that case, I'm going to use three momentum. Nice. No way. All right. Um, so yeah, so the device itself does not seem to be doesn't seem to be inherently sorceress. Uh right. like whoever is using it would need to to have ability of their own. It doesn't just do a thing. Yeah, channels. Right. Um but I will spend four doom. Uh mm. So as you said, yeah, it, it definitely seems to seems to be a channel of some nature. Um, mm -hmm. she, she probably wasn't lying when she said she needed it as the focus for that particular detection spell. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is uh, since you're trained in sorcery, there is a, there is an element of sympathetic magic, like light of like affects like. So if uh, Maledic Mer has a similar amulet, the two could very easily be kind of metaphysically conjoined. Right. So how she can find them. It's how she can find him, but it's also why she was concerned that if she uses it too often, he would be able to find her. Okay. Uh, but as you're studying this, um, you hear this, uh, this voice in your head. It says, Interesting. What can I do for you? Hi, well, right now, nothing. But maybe we'll talk again. I will be waiting. Hi, tis. Thank you. Um, and there's a there's a certain kind of uh, like a sort like a like a sibilance to the voice. There is no doubt in your mind that that voice was not human. It was mm. something. It was something 
pretending to be human for communication purposes, but distinctly not. Gotcha. Well, that's a nice way to get sucked into buying Patreon now, isn't it? It is. Uh, incidentally, Tony, for your own Conan game, you can spend four Doom for a serious complication. Um, but uh, unless anybody has anything in particular they want to do, uh, the rest of the journey to Mesantia is uneventful. Or arrow. Yep. Wrong way on me. Um, can I ascertain like what a value that this would be if it were to be sold? Um, that just like in terms of jewelry, a couple of gold. It's nothing. Nothing truly remarkable. Um, if but in the right hands. But in the right hands. Um, and it depends because you don't know whether you don't know whether this amulet contains what was speaking to you or is a conduit because those are two very different things. Gotcha. Um, you missed some cool shit, Tony. So you're not entirely sure, um, but if you found if you found sorcerer and if you wanted to put this into the hands of a sorcerer, um, it might be worth some serious coiner favors. All right. Well noted. For now, I'm just going to keep it and I'll hide it away where my stash of alchemy is. Okay. All right. Uh, but yes, assuming nobody has anything in particular they would like to do, you can arrive at Mesantia. Sounds good. Over the course of the next several days. I would like to uh, heal. <laughs> job is to drive the ship, and if the ship makes it there, we're good. Ragnar is probably just making small talk with Sahibi. Just to okay. pass the time. Um, yeah, she's... Uh, it's actually that she, she's not necessarily well-traveled, but she's, she's well-educated. Um speaks four or five different languages, has some knowledge of different cultures. Uh, not the sort of in-depth knowledge one would get from having traveled there, but she's definitely read some books here and there. Hmm. And give me... Right, I can roll insight for me if you'd like. I, you can roll insight for me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, the complication even. Um, so yeah, she seems like she seems genuine in her desire to uh, to help. She uh, she does um, she does have she does seem somewhat regretful that she's used. She knows the captain doesn't care for her abilities, and she's a little bit re regretful that she's used them without his permission. Um, pretty much what Ragnar expresses, like, that, yeah, he he himself was also hostile to her when they first met. But, uh, after seeing, like, her genuine, like, respect when he was burying his men, uh, like, he has, like, a new level of, like, like, we're not quite friends yet, but I'm a, a new level of I, tolerance. Yes, it's more like it's like we're 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 okay. Just don't let, just don't make me regret it. Um, and pretty much asked her like, ever been to Nordheim? <laughs> uh, I have not. Uh, my uh, my actual travels are very. Uh, very limited. I've been to Shem. I've been to Argos. Uh, I've been to Stygia. Um, that is the extent of, of my travels, but I've read a lot. Well, if we ever get the opportunity, I'd love to show it to you. 
Hello to show to everybody here. Uh, I, that would be interesting. I've read about I've read about the uh, the thing and the celebrations that they have, and it would be interesting to see. It's a definitely a sight to behold. Well, hopefully your captain will keep me on long enough to see it. I might talk him into it. <laughs> Thank you. And that's like the extent of where he's going with this conversation. <laughs> uh, so as you guys pull into the uh, into the port of Misantia, Misantia is it is a large city and it is positively gleaming. Uh, the vast majority of the of the buildings that you can see, the ones that are built kind of up on the hill, are white marble, uh, reflecting the sun. It is it is bright, and it looks like just sparkling. Uh, for those of you that have not been here, it is it is the capital of Argos. It is the wealthiest city possibly in the world. There's some debate whether Aquilonia is wealthier or not, but it is quite possibly the wealthiest city in the world, and it shows. And it's home. Uh, yes, for some of you, it is home. All right. Um, so as you guys pull in, we will move into the downtime portion of things. Hooray! Yay, downtime! Uh, so first and foremost, uh, everybody will need to pay their upkeep. Do we have any money? Because I have no money to pay upkeep. We have 15 gold to spread around. Well, I need three of that before I even start. Well, actually, we have 11 gold to spread around because four of those are Clytiuses. Thank you. I may have to use some of my talents here to uh, do my upkeep. That's right, you do have the craftsman talent, don't you? That's correct. In fact, I have Master Craftsman. My upkeep is two. I have two, so I'll spend that. Uh, Ragnar has three and an upkeep of three. I can cover how do you, mine. How do, you, how do you calculate upkeep again? Uh, upkeep is three plus status minus renown or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. Minus minus two. So it says here I can use uh, instead of upkeep, I can uh, my period of carousing. I can use that instead, but I can't do anything else. And since you're poke full of holes, you need to heal, yeah. So, how much gold did you give me, Captain? We have 11 to spread. Um, now, I think we paid the crew just before we landed in um, Sham anyway, right? Uh, yes, yeah. you did, yeah. Yeah, once we get all the trade agreements, they're locked out. Everyone got their shit. Yeah, so we can probably um, spread this 11... Um, well, we we have to sell it first, right? Yeah, um, I will assume that like just like the the baseline selling your fifteen gold worth of cargo that you picked up is basically just like part and parcel of like docking, saying, "Hey, this is what we have. Here's our here's our tax papers. This is all legitimate cargo." Unless you unless you think that you've got enough gold to go into the city itself and try to find a better deal, I'm willing to say like. You just cash out for 15 gold and you've got that money. Yeah, that's probably the wisest idea because let's Yeah, I'm okay it. with it. Yeah, we need we need front money. This was legitimate cargo. Got to maintain that look. Um so that would be uh 11 gold uh after you pay back uh Clytius. Yeah, I'm doing the math here. Yeah. Uh Tebby needs 3 for upkeep. 
Three for upkeep and another four to fix those wounds. Okay, before we divide anything, we're going to pay for upkeep, right? Seems to make sense. Yep. Yeah, and then we can go in and work the star metal and work everything else and figure out what that is. So who can't pay for their upkeep? Tebian. And you need three? Correct. Brings us to eight, and you need four heals? <laughs> four heals. Brings us to four. And then after we deal with the star metal, we'll worry about chairs. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds good. So I am healed? Uh, you will be healed. Basically, during this carousing period, you pay your four gold, you visit the healer, uh, you'll be healed. It means you're going to be in port now for at least four days. It's great. Yeah. So, uh, Tia's is going drink it. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, everybody can decide uh, what they would like to uh, to spend their carousing phase doing. Uh, and that includes you can spend XP now if you like. Oh, yes. Very much want to do that. Um, so while you guys do that, we'll take like a quick like 10 minute bio break and everything as you guys get everything figured out. Sounds good. Cool. Clytius needs some counseling. Yeah. Uh, I mean, which is just drinking, really. Yeah, I think it's gold per, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Same. The mental ones are the same as the physical ones. Uh, yes, they are. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, we'll take a quick 10 minute break while you guys figure out what you would like to do crossing wise, and then we'll be back.
Uh, so yes, the uh, the fabled city of Mesentia lies before you. Uh, you have to visit the, the healer, uh, get some trauma, some wounds fixed, all of that fun sort of stuff. Uh, what else are people doing during their carousing phase? Uh, Ragnar will train uh, two more uh, skilled followers. Okay. And we'll, and along that training, we'll also put Berkey and Floki through more intensive training to 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 be more efficient in when when we go to war. Uh, so yes, yeah, so your retinue, uh, any warrior in your retinue gets a bonus D twenty tall melee parry ranged weapon and warfare tests. Um, warriors in retinue no longer need to be within earshot to gain the benefit of your leadership. As with the general talent, this benefit does not apply to other PCs, even if they are under your control. Yes. Uh, and then because, uh, because the people that are part of your retinue are toughened and no longer minions, they actually can take, um, reactions. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice. Do we have anybody that has society in the group inside of me? I don't think I do. <laughs> I have one rank in it. It gives me an eight on a roll. Awesome. I might. I have a two on it that gives me a nine. Yeah, but you're healing, so. I'll be healing for a few days, too. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the whole thing is going to take however much time it takes. So, time during the days of heavy drinking. Yeah, time during the uh, carousing phase is largely nebulous. I have one in society for a total of nine. Like, you uh, got a heal? Quite a few. Uh, just one move. Like, All right, me and Rory get to go explore. Uh, Captain. Well, you're out. While you're out, you uh, might want to find us a couple replacements for those we've lost along the way. Well, we are in Argos. If you can't find a sailor here, you can't find a sailor anywhere. Precisely. I'll be training my retinue. Well, they won't be Nordheimers by any means, but they'll be sailors. At, at this point, I I think we'd be happy with just skilled workers. In every, ball, that in, that, in every house that you can see for for the next three miles, every one of them was a sailor. We are sailor people. Lovely. So I'll pay the gold and the day to get my wound fixed. Okay. And then I'll accompany the captain, and then I have things to do after that. Captain would like to, um, when it's convenient, to go talk to Lord Emerus. Because I think selling the star metal is part of that conversation. Okay. Unless you think that's something the group should do. That's up to you guys. I'll bring things that burn just in case. And the poison. And you can give me back my necklace. Oh, sure. Here you go. I did grab it from a temple that was sinking into the sea. I figured that I earned it. I very much. Just don't let it talk to you. What? Well, you asked me to look into it, and I did. And I'll tell you right now, Lottie, yeah, there's maybe something in there. It's hard to say whether it's channeling itself in or it's there, but um, there's definitely something nebulous about it. Is it worth anything? I uh, well, the gem value is probably worth a couple gold, but it's real, real money would be then finding another sorcerer who would want it. 
Do you have any idea how to find someone like that? Well, I mean, we can knock around and see if we can get an offer for it. You know, it's quite nebulous, so we could just keep it. That way it doesn't fall into anyone else's hands. Right. Maybe Zabibi can uh, come along with our little uh, journey as we walk into the city. Fine, The Or the other option is I can just simply lock it away in the alchemy locker. It's not like anyone's going to touch that. I think I'll keep that on hand for now, if you don't mind, Roy. No, no problem at all. It's all yours, Captain. Just keep in mind that see, BB has yeah. one that looks very, very similar. Aye, and so does her master, I suspect. It is how she's able to figure out where he is. There's a sympathetic link between them. Does that mean he can know where we are? Aye, it's potentially possible if it, he wanted to look for us, I guess, would be the thing. If he's looking for his apprentice, it's possible that he could send up Ping back just like she does to find him, which is why she didn't want to do it a lot, because then it would attract his attention. But honestly, I don't think he gives a rat's ass about us. I don't see why he would. Oh, I suspect he feels that uh, we are so far beneath him, and that's it's not much of his concern. Well, let's play that to our advantage. But first, we need to uh, have a conversation with Lord Emmerich, see what kind of advantage we can get out of the star map. I mean, carrying enough stuff around and basically enough to create two weapons that would start wars over is probably a pretty valuable thing, I would think. Well, more importantly, we have information about his daughter that he was selling off to that prince, remember? Aye, it is. Give him an update. Well, you never know. He might hire us to uh, go fetch her. Aye, it's entirely possible. At least we know where her fate has lied. And, oh, and we do have the handmaid as well, yes. I believe we still do. Oh, and she's never said she's left. Nope, she's just been making herself useful as part of the crew. Aye. Oh. Yeah, it's been a while, so she's probably actually part of the crew now, right? Pretty much. I had suspect as well. But we can always bring her, and she can recount her tale. Right, well, part of the crew. Might as well bring her, and we'll bring Zabibi, just in case. We'll go have a conversation with this lord. Fine, it is. Sounds compliant. Alrighty. Uh, so as you uh, as you approach the uh, the estate, the estate is on the uh, the northeast side of the river that kind of runs through um, Vesantia. Uh, the uh, Corotus River. Um, and it is a it is a impressive estate. There are fields of crops, there are orchards, dozens of servants, um, a small force of men at arms. <clears throat> uh, the entire thing is walled in uh, with a with a gate uh, that has two guards posted at it. And as soon as the, the guards see you approach, and then they see Katrina with you. Where's, where is she? And it's like, we need to see her father. And the guards don't even, they don't even question you. They, uh, they, they escort you right into the, the manor house. Uh, good call. Um, and you're, as you're escorted in the, the guards, um, uh, there, there's a small group, probably five or six of them. All of them, all of them wearing like gleaming breastplates, um, shields, spears. Like they are definitely, they are definitely armed. And from the looks of it, they look how look like they know how to maintain and use their equipment. 
Uh, you're led into uh, Lord Amarius's um, office. He's a, a fairly dour looking man in his mid fifties. Fairly, fairly burly looking. You know, he looks like the sort of person that has, you know, spent spent some time doing physical labor. And he sees Katrina and his face kind of falls. Where, where's a, a Morena? It's like she was, we were beset by pirates. She was taken. And Amarius looks at you. And he looks directly at, uh, at Caro. It's like, pirates, you say? Ah. It's a bit of a good news, bad news situation, my lord. So. So, did you take my daughter when you took my ship? I did not take your really ship. Is. Your ship was burned by a sorcerer named Malagdik Mur. I meant the other one. The sea nymph. Oh, bad ship. Well, that one, no, I, uh, your daughter wasn't on board. But you did take that ship. You proudly oh. proclaimed to the men that you sent on that scow back to harbor that Captain Caro was the one who was responsible. Right. But I have better news for you, my lord. And what is that news? I happen to know where Maledict Murr is heading, and I happen to know where your daughter is. Well, that does seem convenient. Well, if it wasn't convenient, I wouldn't be here, my lord. I would say it all my life. And I suppose... Do you want what? My blessing? You want to extort me for money to rescue her? Well, extort's a strong street. word, but... I, I have a personal vendetta against this maledict murder against what he's done to me and mine. Now, I understand that you have a, a great deal of resource and a great deal of stake in this particular matter as well, my um, lord. He's the now, one that has taken my only daughter, then yes. I think that the two of us working together, uh, excluding that little ship incident, which, which I may add, very few people were harmed. Oh, yeah. oh. I, I think... If, if we work together, we have a much better chance of dealing with this particular sorcerer and dropping into a volcano, which I, which I found, by the way, a perfectly good volcano for a sorcerer. Make a persuade roll. Difficulty is two. I, said, I it's will gladly do that. Time. Well, it's better for you doing it. Because this sounds important. What do you got? Momentum too? Oh, nice. Use all your hero points. I am spending all the hero points. Uh, so you gain two momentum. So he kind of he looks and he is he is pacing uh ever so slight he stops he says well you're either brave foolish or exceptionally greedy i am all those things my lord conveniently i can work with that If you can find and rescue my daughter, if you can return uh, Amarania to myself, or on her journey to her betrothed, I will, out of the goodness of my heart, give you the ship. Well, that's mighty kind of you. 
and to ensure that you and your crew are putting forth every effort uh, on this behalf. How many crew do you currently have? I'll tell them what the number is. How many officers? Uh, currently we have six. And he just, he kind of walks behind the, the desk and he opens up this, this small lock box. Uh, and he basically pours out of it a sizable pile of coin. Uh, it's basically, it's uh, two gold for every crewman. Oh, wow. Plus an additional three for every officer. So basically two gold per crew, five gold per officer. Gonna be hiring some crew. I trust you will make sure that your crew gets their part. This is to ensure that you are not frivolous with your time. Frivolous is not the way we work, my lord. When she is returned alive and in a timely fashion, I will double this. Impressive. Now, I, I, I see that there's a, there's an amount for the crew and the officers. What about the captain? The captain is an officer. Captain's captain. Well, that is for you to discuss with your crew. The others that you brought here, I'm sure will let them know what my offer was. I turned to the um, what? What's her name? The woman who came with us, Katrina. Katrina. So, Lassie, um, you seem to have taken quite nicely to the ship and the crew. I was wondering if you'd like to still come along, and that way you can you can be the the eyes and ears for the Lord. I think that sounds fair. Fine. We'll welcome you both. Your good hand. So, my lord, I think what we're going to need is we're going to need some men, and we're going to need, uh, well, uh, some equipment. It's convenient that you now have some spending money. Well, speaking of which, I would like to give you some spending money as well, my lord. Now, I, I'm bored and bred from Argos, this very city. Spent most of my life living off these waters, living in these these alleys, living uh, living within your navy. From the top to the bottom, from the dirty to the gleaming marble, I've seen it all. But I have something that I don't think you've seen before. Roy, could you could you hand me that ingot? I think Roy's with us, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hi, Captain. Here you are. Here's the one ingot. Uh, as you go to reach into your satchel, the ingot's not there. Um. <clears throat> there, there, there is a clay brick of roughly the same weight. My well, captain, well, it seems we might have a bit of a problem. So the question is, are there two clay bricks or are there one? Uh, did you have both ingots on you or just one? No, just one, because the idea was we'll just bring the one see what he yep. says and that way we'd have one to back up if he didn't yep the one that you brought is missing and has been replaced kind of like you know uh beginning of Raiders of the lost ark style something roughly the same size and weight gotcha well like I, um cotton we seem to have experienced a wee bit of difficulty of course we have 
Well, it appears that someone has taken the ingot and replaced it with a well, fairly similarly hefted uh, clay brick. Well, here regardless, we still have one on the ship. I, the thing is, is that I'm just trying to figure out where in the hell this would have happened. What are you thinking? Vicentia is a very, very, very busy city. Yeah, I, 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 I put it right in the bag, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, well, what the hell? All right, then. We must have encountered some kind of a thief on the way. Um, so Carol has Guardsman's Eye, which he can use command skill to um, resist against thievery tests in crowded areas. Does that help the city? Uh, it wasn't a test. It was Game Master spending Doom. Uh, yeah. I see that Doom is awful low. Game Master. Trying to make our lives hard. That's what well, Doom my is Lord. for. My, my Lord. Yes. I, I, I have managed to um, come across uh, an honest to goodness, perfectly forged ingot of star metal. His, uh, his eyebrow perks up at that. Now, you and I both understand what the, the value of something like this is. Certainly. And you and I both understand that we're both on a mission to, uh, well, as we say, liberate your daughter. So if I put my considerable resources towards you and yours... I suppose you could put your considerable resources between to me and mine, yeah? What exactly do you need? I need a warship. And I need crew. I could arrange for such a ship. It would take time. Of course. Everything takes time. I mean, the longer we're here, the longer it'll take us to fetch your daughter, of course. But uh... Well, then perhaps you can make do with the ship that I've already given you. Well, if you prefer. I mean, the star metal sells with, sails with the ship, right? Now, unless I... Unless I misunderstand, um, kings are made by having access to this particular metal. That's what I was told. Rory, am I speaking of my ass? Or, or... Oh, no, Captain, you're not. Lord, laws, many of wars have been fought over weaponry made from this stuff. Oh, I understand the value, but that does not mean that I'm going to be able to recall a ship from far off instantly. Aye, it is. I understand that. I get that personally. I think sometimes the deep down the captain does too. So if you wish a larger ship, it will take time. I understand that my offer to find my daughter is time sensitive. Oh, yes, my lord. We're all on the same page now. Don't don't mistake me. I, I am not trying to pull one over on you. I am not trying to deceive you. You understand who I am just as I understand who you are. We, we both have come from this particular place. And both of you can give me an insight check. Things are going south. Things are going south. Captain got greedy. Just a sec. All right. I'm going to spend a fortune on this. Okay. 
Can he assist me in this instead? Uh, no. Okay. Is oh, is what uh, what uh, difficulty? Uh, it's only difficulty one. Okay then. I think I'll turn that and do my roll two. Ah! Oof. Oh, we're fucked. He's getting his doom back. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just take the doom. Oh, uh, yeah, he's been, you know, spending that shit. Absolutely. Wait. Uh, Doing a good job of it, too. Uh, both of you notice that the uh, the guards that escorted you in here, uh, they all move uh, a little bit closer to one another. Not closer to you, but closer to one another. Uh, and you just get that brief thing, like, they've got shields and they've got spears, and they are now in a perfect position to uh, basically set up, like, a, a shield wall. Uh, and then poke you guys to death should things continue to go south. <laughs> I take it I'm not in the room at the time. Uh, no, they did not bring Tibian. I am so glad I'm not there. Yeah, you're 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 busy healing. Well, I was near death. Yeah, we we absolutely left all of our combat people behind. It's probably a good thing Ragnar wasn't there either, because temper would flare. <laughs> we were counting on the captain's ability to talk his way into things. Oh, he's talked himself into something already. <laughs> True. Yeah, I got a social of five. I thought this was going to be easy, but goddamn doom. So I see that there are there there are two options really. I'm willing to pay you and your crew to go as quickly as possible and retrieve my daughter for a fairly healthy payout. I'm sure you will agree. I believe that sounds fair. Or. Right. Alternately, you're willing to trade this ingot of star metal for a much bigger ship and then go looking for my daughter in a month. Mm. Oh, I think that sounds good, Captain. What do you think? Well, I don't think it has to be an or equation here. I think it could be uh... an after equation. I mean, if you're willing to trade the ingot, I can ensure that the ship is ready when it's ready. But I would prefer not to wait for this rescue. Oh, I see. Um, Captain, I have a quick word. Uh, if it's okay with the Lord, yeah. Certainly discuss with your advisors. Captain, I was thinking, we lost an ingot when we getting here. What about we just have them come get the one we have on the ship? And then make an agreement for the bigger ship afterwards. Well, see, the, the first thing we're going to have to do is scout the city to find out where the first thing went. Oh, no, don't get me wrong, Captain. We're totally going to do that. But if he's willing to take the ingot that we have now, come send his men and collect it and make an agreement for the bigger ship that could be ready for us after we return his daughter. That would be, I think, a pretty good thing. You're not wrong. Other than the fact, I think you've also noticed the fact that the, the guard have uh, assumed an attack position. Right, and you probably noticed that Zabibi's not fair. They're very happy about that. So he may not be in as much control as he thinks he is. But rather than make it a thing, I think the offer of striking out as soon as we can after folks are healed, trained, or whatever they need, and then using the current ship is a great idea, using the ingot that we currently possess to ensure a potential ship future for us, I think is not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. 
and say I disagree with what you're saying, Laura. All right, then. Strike the deal. All right, my lord, you have parchment and ink. I'm sure we can write up contract. Uh, certainly. And he'll do so. Basically, he will he will agree to, you know, trade a, was it a galleon, I think you're looking for? Yeah, an ingot of star metal for a galleon. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, yes, he is definitely willing to make that trade. Um, do you wish an already existing ship, or would you wish us to have one commissioned for you at the shipwrights? That will take longer, but... Okay. Uh, does Carol know of a galleon that he might own? Uh, he's a he's the lord of a major merchant house. He undoubtedly owns several. Yeah, but Carol would know the best one, right? Uh, yes. So he'll name that one. I want the Enterprise. Or whatever it is. Very well. Upon successful return of my daughter and the exchange of the, uh, the ingot. I and a guard, my lord. Uh, you should send a detail and pick it up from the ship. And he nods over to the guards. They they nod back. And we'll go through the legalese of making the contract. Well, thank you, gentlemen, and by all means, the original payment agreement still stands in addition to the ship. Oh, yes, my lord. You are most kind, my lord. Someday I hope to be sitting in a, right. in a house in a mansion just like this. I'm certain. Now, please go find my daughter. Yeah. All right, we'll muster up some crew and we'll get to uh, get to sailing. Okay. All right. Um, so aside from that uh, and healing, is there anything else anybody wishes to do in Mesantia during the carousing phase? Is anybody looking for rumors? Uh, anything of that nature? Well, I need to. Uh... Obviously, Captain has commissioned me to find something to stick on the ballista, so I need to find some uh, new ingredients to make the, the burning potion or two. Uh, I also want to spend XP, so I want to raise my sorcery from 1 to 2 in expertise for 400, and then spend 150 on... Uh, what skill was it? Avoid danger from the healing town okay. sounds like a good skill yeah it's actually pretty sexy it um essentially allows you to you recognize the various environmental risks and know how to mitigate them you may substitute your healing skill for survival for the purposes of avoiding hazards oh, nice. oh that's really great yeah, that's a whoa, whoa, let's not, not, don't go that way. Oh, no. all right. Um, so, uh, well, basically, we'll just say over the over the course of a couple of days, people get trained, people get healed. Um, the captain and Aurora can disperse the funds, uh, that they've been given by uh, Lord Amarius. Absolutely, and we're going to try to get more crew, obviously, while we're here. Yeah, um, so yeah, and Lord Amarius will send out word as well that you're looking for crew, so that will definitely help. Um, so that would be uh, five gold for everybody. Nice. Uh, with a promise of double that upon return of the daughter. Well, let's not disappoint. So that leaves us with four that we haven't spent yet. Actually, I will put two of that back into the pot because you guys spent so much money on me lately. So I'll only take three. That will cover my uh, my bills next time around. So that brings us to six. We'll just give one gold each to all the officers, which is the PCs and Grim. Okay. 
Yeah, perfect. Uh, and as you're kind of doiling out the the coin here and realizing just th basically what uh, what Amarius is paying, um, he he is willing to pay more gold than any of you have ever ever seen to get his daughter back. By the time it's all said and done, it is like north of three hundred gold. He's paying out. Sexy. I like it. So now we have a new mission that can go hand in hand with the revenge mission. Uh, and uh, to Karo, the fact that he didn't even blink at this amount of money is... You're having a hard time wrapping your brain around how much wealth he must actually sit on. Yeah, I think Carol has a pretty good idea how powerful a merchant lord in, in Argos is. Which is, you know... When they, he said he was, you're either brave or really stupid. Kind of like Carl knew what he was going into. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll absolutely take this. We're not dead. So uh, living is in. And as you guys are kind of like making your way through Misantia, this is after the healing, so everybody can kind of take part. Uh, as you're going about doing your thing, replacing swords, getting new soldiers, drinking at the tavern, all of that stuff, I will get everybody to give me a difficulty one observation test. Is this a large crowd? Uh, yeah, every place in Masantia is a large crowd. Can I use my fortune on that? You sure can. I'm also assuming that his retinue came and got the ingot, right? Yes, absolutely. They, they did. Okay, good, thank God. There's some bit for the pool. Too bad we're already full. I'll spend one. And re-roll the 20. Into a more different 20, apparently. All right. Uh, so, uh, a couple of things. Most of you noticed. So, worry generated one. Party has generated one. Or succeeded. All right. Um, so, oh, and Clay has got a compli. Or uh, yeah, Clay has got a complication. We will do that. Um, so uh, as you guys are making your way through, either either in groups or, or separately, you kind of you can depend on how you want to handle this. But at various points throughout the day or days while you're in Messantia, you notice that you're being followed. Mm -hmm. um, and Hebian, since you rolled so well, you notice that the person who's tailing you is deliberately deliberately allowing themselves to be spotted like they're tailing you but it's not that they're not good at tailing you it's that they're deliberately allowing themselves to be spotted periodically should i go ask what's up buy it around well maybe uh ragdoll would like to join you into uh having a conversation with this person Ragnar's kind of violent, though. Yep. I'll happily go with you, Tavian. I'm not sure I want to tell Ragnar, because Ragnar's kind of violent. <laughs> no, I'll tell the captain and suggest that maybe I should have a talk with him. He's obviously wants to have a conversation. Would you prefer Clytius over Ragnar? Itia seems to be somewhat preoccupied trying to find where his missing money pouch went. Yeah, no, I'll take uh, I'll take Ragnar, but uh, just don't hit anybody until someone hits first, please. Tevian, I'm hurt that you don't believe in my self-control. Oh, I believe in your 
self-control and also the control over your knives, daggers, spears, and swords. That's what I'll keep my hands above the waist, all right? Yeah, your hands never left your wrist. Arms folded across the chest. All right, so the next time that... Uh, Next time that uh, he, this person who's following us, lets himself see, seen, I will, uh, I'll wave to him, jingle a couple of coins, and nod over to uh, the, whatever the nearest pub is. Let's I... see if he decides to join us. He certainly will. The nearest port is called the Drunken Sea. Ha ha. Basically built on like an old wharf that kind of juts out into the eastern end of the harbor. I'll take a quick look for Krakens, and if I don't see any, I'll go right in. Okay, perfect. Uh, and in the meantime, Clytius, between the complication and the doom spend, your uh, money pouch is in fact missing. As the dirty, dirty thieves of Mysantia add to the loot they have taken from the party. Great. Do I still have the two gold that I keep in my boots? Yes. All right. It's a good thing you specified that, huh? <laughs> Always keep two boot the two gold in your boots. You friggin' betcha. All right. Um so yeah, so uh the, the gentleman that's been following you um makes his way into the tavern and you can see he is a very like very very well um uh, well coiffed his you know nice hair nicely trimmed to goatee uh piercing blue eyes well i order uh, a pitcher of uh ale uh three glasses and three shots of rum and uh kind of kick the uh ragnar and i will sit down and i'll kick a chair open waiting for him to join us if he just so decides to Um, so yeah, so he kind of thought us up. It's like, thank you. It's a uh, thirsty work out there. Thank you. It certainly is. Uh, I'm Tabian. This is my associate Ragnar. See, you've been following us around for a while. Uh, are you? What are you looking? What you looking for? Are you yeah. looking for a job? You look like you're pretty well off anyway. Okay. Kind of. He looks around to make sure that like nobody else is kind of listening in. And then like leans forward. It's like, my understanding is that your captain and uh, some of your crew visited Lord Amarius. Well, uh, I don't think Ragnar nor I were there at the time, right? You weren't. I mean, you know. I mean, they came back with a bunch of money. And then some some guards came and took the star medal and got... Okay. Uh, yes, that's something that happened. I don't think it's a secret. Is it a secret, Ragnar? I don't think so. I wouldn't say it is. Yeah, I, I think our captain commissioned a, commissioned a ship uh, to be built. Something like that. I forget how it went. I wasn't party to it, you, you understand. Oh, I understand. All I know is money involved. Money yeah, does make that, the work around. In fact, the drinks are on the, are due to that. So, uh, bottoms up. <laughs> yep, he'll uh, he'll drink. I represent other interests. I see. And while it is indeed unfortunate that uh, Emirena had a sad fate befall her, there are parties that would be interested in ensuring that she simply never returns to Argos, is never found, and never weds Prince Halak. So take to your captain that there are interested parties who are willing to match, if not exceed, Lord Emerius's offer. And Quick if he, question, friend. If he's, yes. Who are these parties? I am not at liberty to discuss. I am merely here to put forth the offer for you to take to your captain. Well, I can certainly do that. I've spent my career trying to avoid politics, mind you, but uh, so I'd rather just not know that name. 
Well, thank you. Thank you for the, the drink. And he slips a couple of like coins onto the table to kind of cover his share. Huh. Tell the captain that should he wish to discuss this matter further to uh, leave a message here. Uh, leave a message for Orenthes. Orenthes. Will do. Uh, and both of you can give me an insight check. I'm going to use my other fortune. Sure. Uh, I'm going to use mine as well. There. It's about time Tabby is doing some stuff interesting or something useful anyway. How'd I do? Three successes, two momentums. All oh, right. Uh, Ragnar also there. Uh, so there is some extra momentum in case you guys have any questions because there is already a full momentum pool. Right. Um, there's a there's a brief moment of hesitation as he does the name Orenthes, like he's like he has to think of it, like it doesn't come immediately to mind, indicating it's probably not his actual name. Oh, I figured that. Yep. Uh, I am very I'm a sage and very observant and. Uh, very and, and 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 well well educated, uh, including in the uh, the politics of the the major centers. Uh, so I will use uh, one momentum to figure out based on his mannerisms and his dress and any pins he might be wearing or, or lapel, icons on his lapels or sword hilts or anything like that to figure out. Rough idea who he is working for, or at least uh, which conglomerate. Okay. Um, as you kind of like glance over, kind of take everything in, um, you notice that his his cloak seems to be reversible, like a different color on the inside than on the outside, and not in a fashion way, but like in a quick change sort of way. Oh, thieves guild type thing. Um, and the same, like his his shirt seems like it's the sort of thing that he could like quickly turn inside out for a different color. Um. The, the 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 well the well kept hair uh, seems to be a very very well maintained wig. Um, the sort of thing indicates, uh, if not probably not a thieves guild, it's a little bit kind of too too highbrow for any thieves guild you're familiar with, but definitely the sort of thing you would expect from like a spy or a, or an okay. agent. All right. Uh... I'll, since I got to use all three because we have full momentum. Yep. Uh, when he came in, did other people uh, working with him come in? Also come in that uh, are trying to hide the fact that they're with him. There's a there's like three or four people that are definitely watching his back. All right, and they're all. All right, so. That's the last question. Do I would I know of this particular uh, guild? Is like an assassin's guild, the hand, the um, no, but it, it's not uncommon for the different merchant houses in uh, Mesantia to have their own private armies and private uh, assassins, so on and so forth. Uh, so there, there's no doubt that he's working for. Uh, it's not government. It's it's merchant. Right. Okay. All right, that was my three. Trade wars. Kind of the same thing in, in Argos. Yeah. Yeah, fair. So he just says, you know, just pass the message on to the captain. Uh, the decision is his to make, and then he'll just walk out the door. All right. What do you think of that? I think uh, our day just got a lot more interesting. Well, and I'll pound back my uh, shot of rum. Uh, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> Tebian probably notices that Ragnar's drinks are already gone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want another round, or should we go tell him right away? <laughs> uh, let's grab another one. All right. 
two more shot seats, and uh, I'll empty the. There's three. There's what six pints in a pitcher, so yeah. So we'll finish it off. Okay. So we'll come back uh, three with three shots and three pints in each, in us. So and uh, tell the captain a very good story that's only slightly embellished uh, about our heroism. It's only slightly true. Only oh. when I held him in a headlock did he tell us what he wanted. Well, you assaulted this man. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not, Captain. It was all friendly. I, there was no weapons involved. He came out unbloodied. You could barely tell he was wearing a wig by the time he was done. Oh, in any case, the important thing is uh, there's another very expensive, very uh, wealthy merchant who's uh, got an offer for you. I suppose we know which one. Not yet. Nope. I did my best, but they're rich enough to have their own force. There, there was uh, several other people who would uh, slid into the uh, into the bar with the rest with uh, him, completely unnoticed. Uh, and we weren't supposed to. We weren't supposed to see them. What? It's wealthy. They're spies, but they're corporate spies, not uh, not government spies. Well, I do appreciate talent. So I suppose the best thing we can do, Tabian, is for you to uh, have a trip back down to your favorite bar and leave a note. Let them know I'm willing to meet. I'll go with you, Tabian. Where and when? At the convenience. All right. Who's coming with me? Ragnar. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, uh, bring your boys with you, just so we, uh, you know, if they're bringing people, we might as well as well, right? All right. Uh, I'll bring uh, Berkey, Floki, and my two unnamed Argosians, um, because I don't want to cry for them. Um, we're going bar hopping. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, you guys can go and kind of leave a leave a note uh, at the at the tavern. I'm gonna buy a bottle of full bottle of that rum. I thought it was pretty good. Ragnar and I can split that later. Yeah, yeah. For Perfect. a job well done. Yeah, and that's all sort of taken into account during your upkeep. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. And is there any other carousing type things people wish to do before we uh, roll for carousing events and then potentially into uh, a start of an urban adventure, depending on what you want to do with these thieves who have taken you for so much? Well, we definitely want to track down star metal. So, yeah, if, if that's after carousing, I think I'm good. Yeah, it would be after carousing. Yeah, and I need to uh, get some good ingredients to make a couple good burning bombs for the ballista. Okay. Uh, why am I equipping this? Sorry, I'm searching through the PDF when I've got the core book sitting like right here. I think what I'm going to look into next for like talents and stuff is like going into ballistics and artillerist okay uh okay ingredients are easily available they cost you two gold each uh and part of your upkeep also means that you have restocked your field uh your uh, your alchemy lab mm -hmm. uh so it has uh it has a full complement of uh of resource as well okay well I think what we'll do is we'll, since this is the great experiment, so I think we'll try to just, we'll go for one. Uh, I'll spend the two gold to get the extra ingredients. Okay. 
Uh, so yeah, I think a fully kitted out facility has six. Yeah, but these are the extra ones. I want to keep the yep. kit for when I'm on the road. Okay, perfect. All right, mm -hmm. so I spent two gold. I'll acquire it, and then we'll attempt to make something. Okay. What level explosive would you like to make, or burning liquid would you like to make? Well, I figure... This is probably some stuff is good for me here. So we're probably going to try to drag it into uh, something, obviously, that spreads with good stuff. Let me guess, try to access the tables again. Uh, and there is a full momentum cool as well, so. I know, that's what I was thinking. Oh, and the uh, the alchemy lab on board the ship does reduce the difficulty by one. Excellent. Well, what's the top of the food? Uh, difficulty five. So go down to difficulty four. All right. Well, let's aim for that then. I mean, Lord knows I managed to make the level five black lotus thing. He, yeah, we still he have that too. Oh yes, I'm well aware. Uh, so yes, hellish brimstone, area fearsome in Sendry Four, and six dice a damn. That sounds like ship capable stuff. Yes, it's not quite a Gosian fire, but it's not far off. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna spend um, a. Amount um, of my talent points, whatever it is, or the um, fortune points. Points, yeah. I spend a fortune and an extra, and an extra momentum, so I get the full five dice roll. Okay. All right. Thinks I don't have any fortune points. Oh, I may not have reset them at the start of the. Take care. All right, so difficulty five goes down to four. So one moment. Um, so yeah, you do get one of the hellish brimstones, and one more for every momentum you want to spend. I will spend that remaining momentum that I generated to turn it into two. I'll oh, spend a couple more. All right, why don't we spend three more to the pool then, and we'll make it five. Okay, perfect. So yeah, you use up the ingredients that you bought and a couple of things that you had in the in the kit, and you've got these like absolutely potentially devastating fire bombs. Excellent. All right. And then before we move into the start of adventure time, we will finish off with the carousing events. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody can roll a d20. Oh, that's good roll, Tevia. Thank you. I think low is good. And the table's kind of all over the place. And I will roll for Ragnar. Not only did I get lucky, she bought dinner. So the two lowest would be a five and a two. Uh, 
All right. So the player characters have crossed paths with a soothsayer. Oh no. Uh, so anybody who wishes to can spend a gold to have their fortune told. Not on your life. Uh, <laughs> how does that work? Uh, you spend a gold to have your fortune told, and then uh, we'll randomly determine if it is a good fortune or not. Is that gonna? Is that binding or something? Is it worth a damn doing it? Uh, if it's uh, if the fortune is good, it means you get a free reroll during the next adventure, and if it is not good, it means you will suffer some despair. Oh, I'll make a roll for that. I'll pay, my, I'll pay my dues. So she, uh, she basically kind of like grabs Tebbian's palm and she looks at it. And then she gets this look of concern on her face. Oh, no. I mean, it's Tebby. So. He's been rolling great, so it's time. She looks, she says, like, Beware the... Beware the, the full of the moon. Dark tidings are upon your soul. You must be exceptionally careful, or the land will claim you. All righty then. And then you think, and you're like, well, when we're in the desert, like, then you realize, like, you're pretty much at the full moon. And, well, I'll be exceptionally uh, uh, vigilant. Uh, so you will get uh, two points of despair that cannot be healed by any means until the end of the next adventure. Okay. Never that was worth, mess, that, was, never, that, that, that was worth uh, a gold. Never mess with prophecy. Just don't do it. Uh, at least this is consistent. I mean, Tebian's like, you know, getting a lot of fears and phobias. Despair, does that go through like uh, trauma? Uh, yes, on your, uh, the, the little red circle above your max resolve, just put two in there. All right. Yeah. It basically lowers your maximum resolve. That's okay. Tebian's never been that resolute. That, that is very true. That Tebian has seen some shit. Next thing you know, people are going to start telling you that there is a prophecy and you're cursed. Yeah. Uh, anybody else wish to have their fortune told? Oh, Carol is not going anywhere near that thing. Thank you, Pass. Ragnar is scared of the uh, of magic. Yeah, she's not even using runes or anything. Yeah, this is bad juju. So she will look somewhat disappointed, but she will uh, she will pocket Tebian's uh, Tebian's gold, and at the same time she'll look at him and she'll just kind of like kind of mouth the words like "Beware the moon," and she she kind of like steps backward like Homer stepping into the hedge back into her tent. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll spend the three days of the full moon on the boat. <laughs> Yeah, he might turn into a werewolf. Who knows? Well, now nice you like the water. All right, no. You, you, you're a fickle bitch, Tebian. Get me off the water. Get me on the water. Get me off the water. Which, which one is it? Depends who's chasing me, Captain. Um, but at the end of the crowning phase, I think we'll I think we'll call it there. Now that you have two kind of adventure hooks, two Sounds and a half. Good. Uh, there's the Thieves Guild, who has taken uh, your star medal and uh, and Clytius's coin purse. Uh, there is meeting the mysterious other involved party, uh, or there is setting sail to track down the daughter for a very, very rich payout. I would say those sound like one, two, and three. 
but everybody can have 150 XP. Oh, so we, we could always agree to both to make sure we get paid. Either way. I highly suspect that our current patron will know if we've met with somebody else. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm sure he has spies. We're, we're definitely going to meet with somebody else. <laughs> Uh, but yes, so that was our our last game of Conan for 2021. Who's So we will pick up in the new year. Happy, uh, happy Mary, everybody. Happy yeah. ho ho. Yes, for those of you that uh, that I won't see virtually or or otherwise, have a great whatever holiday you choose to celebrate. Mm, I'll just be home doing nothing. I suspect. We're we're it's, waiting it's to own. see if the if the province doesn't completely boobar everything. We're debating having some people that we know are vaccinated and stuff out for New Year's. Right on. So cool. Find a way to get a booster shot. I got mine booked for January fifteenth. Yeah. Uh, I got mine already, uh, Jeff. That little pharmacy on uh, Prospect there. Shoppers. Uh, no, the Pharma, Pharma Choice, Pharma Save, Pharma something. Oh, oh yeah, that one that's right up by you. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm not I'm old enough. Apparently, I'm the young man in the world. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, I'm old enough. Being diabetic gets you on all kinds of lists. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll keep people appraised uh, depending on how the province shakes out for, for New Year's Eve type stuff. All right. right. The Sounds great. And deaths haven't exactly been encouraging. Yeah, that's the that's the thing. So, um, but we'll see what happens. So, if I don't see folks, have a have a good holiday and uh, stay too. safe, everybody. Stay yes. safe, all of you. Yes. yes, good yeah. lord, stay safe. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks, all right. Chris. Have a good night, guys. Good night, guys. Everybody.